Hey guys, Sunny here. So if you are new to my channel, I am a professional ballroom dancer and I share um, almost daily uh, kind of mini clips on various aspects of the ballroom dance world from the perspective of a longtime industry insider. And so this is actually in video two from one I posted yesterday about things that you can do as a dancer to extend the length of time in your life that you get to ballroom dance, okay? Um, the first video I posted um, was aimed primarily at ladies. Um, however, men, if you do Latin or you have any sort of orthopedic uh, foot issue, absolutely check out that video and I will post a link to that in the description below if you missed that yesterday. Okay, so five things we can do as dancers to dance our entire lives, okay? Number one is to social dance, okay? So this is a, a great mm, misunderstanding in the competitive community, like, oh, I shouldn't social dance, it'll hurt me. This is ridiculous. Certainly don't dance with individuals who are um, not physically safe to dance with, and you can identify them visually. You don't even have to dance with them, but um, social dancing is actually fabulous for your dancing. Um, here's why. You never know when you might get a divorce, when your partner might move. Um, when you get some sort of injury that prevents you from dancing, when you run out of money, when your part, when your pro moves out of town, could be any number of things, okay? Um, and you might not have the opportunity to compete anymore. So um, social dance is a fabulous way to keep um, more than one aspect of your life connected in ballroom dance. It's a great place to meet potential partners. It's a great place to practice what you learn. Um, it's a great place to make friends. Um, <clears throat> uh, it will also, frankly, um, increase your learning curve as well and could just give you access to people who don't take from your specific teacher. In the event, what if your teacher decides to retire from prom competition? I had a coach that dumped all of his students except for one prime lady that offered to pay him a boatload of money to only dance with her. These things happen, okay? And fortunately, I was very hooked into the social dance community. I, I knew all the other dancers in town and was able to immediately have many more options on where I could get coaching um, and that sort of thing. So definitely social dance if you can. It does not have to be every day. Most cities have social dance opportunities once a week um, or even more. Okay, number two suggestion to extend the life of your ballroom dance career, even if it's just a social career, um, listen to your body. So if something hurts, take a little break. I understand we all love dancing. I hate taking a break, but it will pay off. If you tweak your back, um, if your knee feels funky, your body will miraculously heal itself. And actually much faster than modern medical science will if you let it, okay? That means sometimes we gotta take a little break. And um, if you take two weeks off and you're like, oh man, that hip still hurts or something. My shoulder is really bothering me. You know what? Take one for the team. I don't like going to the doctor either, but go in and have it taken. Uh, someone take a look at it who's a professional. So you can get that thing healed up fastest and permanently. Okay. Um, number three, burnout. Um, I don't see this with social dancers, but absolutely with competitors, um, especially elite level competitors that are pushing to their max, that are practicing seven days a week, that are making great sacrifices to their careers, to their family, um, that are spending a lot of money, that are incredibly emotionally invested in their dancing. Um, the reality is burnout is natural. And unlike the rest of the world, the United States really doesn't have an off season for competition. 
Um, in Europe, there's almost nothing going on for like two months after Blackpool ends because everyone is taking a little physical and emotional, I call it mental health break. And that's fine. They come back rejuvenated and refueled with that love and passion for dancing. So um, if you're feeling a little bit of, ah, I'm just, I need a little break, it's totally fine to take one. You can always get back on the horse. It's way easier to relaunch dancing than to start from scratch. So don't worry about that. And honestly, sometimes with competitive couples, ladies, I see you be so hard on your partner. Why don't you dance with me two hours a day, seven days a week? We shouldn't take a break. We're going to fall behind. You know what? Give your partner a little breathing room. Um, they, it's okay for them to take a little break and then jump back on that uh, in that race car with you, okay? They very, very, very likely will. And they're much more likely to stick with it long term. And ballroom dancing is an end game. No one gets great in a month or a year or honestly even five years. Like it's a long-term game we're playing, okay? And the longer you do it, the better you'll get. Even if you're not taking lessons at all, even if you just participate in that free lesson that usually is included with the cheap social dance admission, okay? Won't be the best dancing, but either way, if it's bringing you joy, that's great. And we want to do it for the rest of our lives. Okay, number four. Um, this really doesn't apply to social dancers or even people that take group classes. These things are, are available, honestly, on the cheap, um, if you look around. Um, however, for those of you that compete, particularly those of you that compete at an elite level, okay, where you are spending every dime on your dancing and sometimes then some, budget accordingly, okay? So be responsible and you're spending just like you would with any other habit, okay? Um, so that means not spending outside of our means. Um, if you are spending outside of your means, tapping into savings, that's okay, as long as you're not tapping into your retirement. Um, honestly, many, many people that ballroom dance is a hobby. Um, this is, uh, Definitely an optional um, lifestyle choice. So these people do tend to have money. Um, it's not like jogging where they just do it for free. But if that's not you, please budget accordingly. And it's always okay to take a break from the competition scene or to limit yourself. I have seen pros, um, many of them require their students. Well, if you want to dance with me, you need to compete at least six times a year, blah, blah, blah. If that's the case with you and it is not comfortably within your budget, find another pro. There are, there's more than one fish in the sea. I promise you that. Okay. Um, number five, um, if you have the option of choosing between standard and Latin, all things being equal, I would go with the standard or the smooth versus the ballroom versus Latin and rhythm. Let me say that again, because this is important. Um, smooth and standard, meaning the traditional ballroom dances, are going to be much easier on your joints and your feet than the Latin and rhythm. Now, rhythm is done more of a bent leg action, so that is also significantly better on your body than doing the international Latin. I don't know any like senior um, Latin level pros. They all blow out um, their knees and their hips um, at a relatively young age because it is a very high impact activity, okay? Um, versus the ballroom dances or even the rhythm um, are lower impact, the ballroom and um, the smooth and standard being the least impact. Those are extremely low impact, graceful gliding actions. As a matter of fact, those dances can delay arthritis. Um, this being said, if you think Latin and rhythm are the bomb and that's what's joyful for you, do it. Um, but just go in knowing that you might not be able to certainly compete at those levels, your, um, at the high levels your whole life, or at least, um, and hopefully you can continue social dancing. But just, I want you to go in with eyes open, um, knowing 
kind of the wear and tear that can do um, on your body, okay? Um, for ballroom, on the other hand, I've taken with many standard coaches that are seriously in their 80s and they feel like I'm dancing with a 20 year old. They are so fit, so agile, it's incredible. So anyway, either way you go about it, dancing is great for you physically and mentally, but um, just know that going in. I hope those things um, are helpful hints for you to dance the entire rest of your life. Um, as a matter of fact, that's one of the things that got me into ballroom dance. I loved dancing when I was younger, but I didn't know any old ladies that ballet danced. And I was like, you know what? I've seen older people do ballroom dance. I can do that. And I'm so thankful I made that choice. So anyway, have a wonderful week. Happy dancing. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.